Welcome back to the Baggers and Bruce channel for today's edition of Thirsty Thursday. On today's edition, we're going to actually review Lagunitas IPA. So how, how did Lagunitas, like what is, what is Lagunitas Brewery? Well, Lagunitas Brewery actually started out in Northern California in 1993 by a, a brewer that's uh, Tony McGee. Uh, he started home brewing on a stove. So from there he actually moved down to uh, Forest Knolls. And uh, he started brewing there. It's like the town next to Lagunitas. It's, right? it's the town right it's next to Lagunitas, yeah. yeah. So uh, he, ca he did Lagunitas because he thought it was a, a cool name. After that, he started uh, moving around. He said that he wanted to go ahead and, and get bigger because he ran out of space. So he moved down to uh, Forest Knolls, California. Uh, actually, Pataluma, California, mm -hmm. not Forest Knolls. Uh, he was at Forest Knolls before. And that's where he got bigger and was perfecting his, his recipe. So now we need to go ahead and try this recipe. So this is a West Coast IPA, West right? Coast IPA. So, yeah. so not something, I mean, this is not the first West Coast IPA we reviewed, mm -hmm. but... 6.2%, um, 6.2. I've never... You've never had this. I've You've never, never, never had I've this. never had this beer. And so. it's on tap, I don't know, at a million bars. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I've always just ordered something else. Like I've just never ordered the Lagunitas. So you guys so. talked about previously with Allagash, how you go into a bar and you, if it's on tap, you order it. This is a beer that if I go to an event, and they have a it. lot of times at events, either this or Goose Island are like the only IPAs they'll have mm -hmm. on to have a concert or a, yep. a sporting event. Very common. Even bike rallies and stuff. So mm -hmm. I this is always my go-to when, when mm -hmm. I'm looking for an IPA at an event because it's, it's usually the only one or it's Goose and I like this better. So All right. it's, it's pretty yeah. good. And it's, if it's the only IPA on top, that's what I'm ordering every single time. All right, quit yapping, let's yeah, check all right. it out. It's the only uh, IPA in tap. I'm, I'm probably looking for wheat beer. Yeah. <laughs> so I read there are 43 varieties of hops in this beer and 65 varieties of malt in this beer. It is a nice caramelly color. Nice caramel, clean, and it's clear. 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 I dig it. Man, I got a lot of head on mine. You sure did. See, this is the appropriate. Amount. That is the appropriate. Now, now you got you got that pour that's correct. A little aggressive. It is. It is. I want. Now, when, when I think of West Coast IPA and I smell this beer, this this is um, this is really what I'm thinking of. Yep. That is piney. It is citrusy. And somebody somebody left a comment a few videos ago, and they said, "What what, what do you expect out of a West Coast IPA?" And you know, I, I expect that citrus on the nose, that, that pine on the yep. nose, and I expect it to also be a very dry beer. You know, without yep. a lot of, uh, without a lot of, dry meaning not a lot of sweetness to it. Is it possible so, to smell dry? It is not possible to smell dry. I don't think. It smells dry. <laughs> it smells dry. <laughs> okay. It smells like wet dog. Which is kind of funny being you're allergic to dogs. Yeah, which is kind of funny. Anyway, I'm, I think it's very, very piney, very woodsy. I, it's just uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the nose. Yeah. And it tastes very piney. And woodsy? Yeah, very piney. It does taste piney. It's got some citrus in there, but it's um, definitely an upfront bitterness. Um, Definitely some pine. You don't taste that caramel? It tastes a little caramel. Tastes a little caramel? Yeah. Very slight. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he actually didn't add in any uh, any kind of ingredients until he really moved again. Because he wanted his beer to be countrywide, statewide. You statewide. Know. Well, which leads us to another thing about Lagunitas. I yeah. mean, technically, Lagunitas is not a craft brewery. It technically is not. Um, Heineken um, in 2015, I remember years ago, yeah. bought a 50% share of, oh. of Lagunitas mm -hmm. um, to, you know, 
to help McGee get his his beer, you know, distributed more worldwide. Yep. Um, and obviously, if you know, if your business plan is is to distribute worldwide, then you're going to need a backer of a Budweiser or a Heineken or or somebody of that. So this is why when you go to an event, you know, and events are typically you know run by Bud mm -hmm. or Heineken yeah. or or Miller or somebody like that. That's why you're seeing a Lagunitas IPA. You know. Yep. And that really didn't happen until he moved the whole brewery to Chicago, to the Windy City. <laughs> that's that's where all his. He said the Windy. City. And it's cold. It right is now. the Windy City. I, I cringe when you say Windy City because right now it's twenty it's degrees. Twenty degrees out. So. out. <laughs> oh boy, baby, it's cold now. But this, that being said, this is a, a good a good beer for a twenty degree day. I mean, this is. Uh, Does it drink like a seven percenter? I think it does. Uh, it's I, I, I think on it's the like border. A, I think I think it's every bit of a seven percent beer. I mean, me personally. I what guess. is it again? Six point two. It's six point two. Yeah, six point two. I right around, it, right around 50 IBUs, and I know we've talked about IBUs, international bittering units, a couple times. Um, IBUs don't tell the whole story of a beer. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, when you you look at a beer like this, that is, you know, a much lighter ABV, and you know, a 50 IBU beer, and then you look at a beer like um, Voodoo Ranger Imperial. This is more bitter than the Voodoo Ranger, mm -hmm. roughly the yeah. same IPA uh, IBUs. IBUs. Yeah, yep. yeah. This so, is, is it's it's got a little bitter. It's got like you said, piney, and it's almost got a little breadiness to it. Piney, you know, like so, uh, a little yeasty, little yeah, like um, almost like a little brown ale type of or, or a um, I don't know, almost Muffins. like this like Munich malt, <laughs> like a like an Oktoberfest <laughs> kind of taste to it. I mean, it's more heavily hopped to me, but I feel like it's got that hmm. that a malty backbone in there that is not you know but comparing it multi to multi backbone yeah huh? mm. comparing it to other IPAs though you don't get that that super hoppy taste to it like you do with the the no it's more balanced than more that. balanced than it that is balanced so for those mm. that don't like the super hoppy taste this might be a good beer to introduce yourselves into to uh, IPAs. into IPAs um, and then you'll you probably develop a taste for the the heavier IPAs after that. Yeah, it's definitely not the most bitter no, IPA it's not. that I've had. I mean, it's, it's uh, got it's got like a, a I don't know, like a, a richness that kind of right that takes away from the yeah, yeah. kind of mellows out the the hoppy, the hoppy IPA IPA taste. Word, hmm. nice. I feel like I'm getting uh, I don't know Cascade hop. Like there's a Definitely, like now, it's like starting to like warm up a little bit. I'm, I'm getting like a serious say. Well, your, your, beer, your beer's gone. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens this when we review IPAs. <laughs> we kind of have to go Listen, through all of them so he can get the right. I need, yeah. I need to be right thorough review. for you guys. I do this for He's you. He's gonna be very thorough. I do this for you, <laughs> and now I'm getting some head. A little too much. Yeah, I mean, the hop smell that I'm getting out of this right now is just, to me, much more insane than when I opened it. Yeah. No, no, you got it. You just smell. poured it. I think, I think I might... Uh, you need to warm it up. No, I think I have COVID. Yeah. <laughs> don't smell it. <laughs> don't dip your nose in it. It's, don't snort it. There you go. Twice in one day. <laughs> I can't even drink mine now. This is not fair. So... I like the color. What is that? What are you what? doing? So, what am I? Yeah, what, what, what am I doing? So, when you do this, you trap the the aroma inside the glass, and then it's like a Dutch oven. Kind of <laughs> like a, it's kind of like a craft beer Dutch oven. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I then. think we may have come up with a new term. Uh, only here on Baggers and Brooks. Craft beer Dutch oven. I like it. I mean, I, I've never had it. Um, would you drink it again? I would drink it again. Would you buy it. I would, or do I have to buy it and then you would drink it? If you bought it, I would definitely drink it. <laughs> um, but I, I gotta say, I, I wouldn't necessarily shy away from ordering it. You know, no, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, you, you know what I mean. I mean, this is something that if I saw on tap, and I mean, there's obviously a lot of beers that I like, but it, I've seen this on tap all over. Yeah, I mean, I've been all over the country and seen Lagunitas on tap, and you know, I've never, you know, really tried it. And, and I, I mean, that's why I get excited when I, I'm at an event and. They have this because I know, like, based on everything else, they're gonna have Bud, Bud Light, right. and some Heineken or 
rolling rock. Core, or, yeah. Core, like, I'm, I get excited because I know I got something I can drink. Something that's good, something that's not a light beer. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, like so, I said, this and Goose Island will be, in, and maybe we'll do Goose Island. Goose Island, Island yeah. yeah. Similar situation, Goose Island, right? Chicago Brewery, um, owned by Budweiser. Yeah. For their distribution. Yeah. I think six one nine is six one nine there in their IPA. I forget what the name of their their big IPA is, but um, oh, yeah, I don't know. I normally just get the regular Goose Island. This this might shock you. I've never had Goose Island. Jeez. That is, <laughs> Goose Island is actually the beer, the go-to beer when I go to the, the football games. Because they have it at the Eagles. They have it at the Eagles and the Phillies and Flyers games. Yes. Like that's like the beer of the Philly event. Goose Island yeah. and Wolf Pup are the two that I drink when I go to Eagles games. Who makes Wolf Pup? That's a good question. I have no clue. Golden Road. Golden Road. That's, that's I just learned something yeah. new. That's Owned by a woman, I believe. And you say it's California. So once again, we have... West Coast IPAs that have made it across all the way to the East Coast, ready, apparently readily available for everybody. Listen, Lagunitas I mean, is everywhere. I mean, you even see Lagunitas in uh, movies and TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching Kingdom, the MMA show, and uh, they were drinking Lagunitas. I, I got to say, this is one of the West Coast IPAs that, that I, I really enjoy because West Coast IPAs really... I. I by the time I got into IPAs, the East Coast stuff was coming up, and most of the IPAs I was drinking when I got into IPAs were like local New Jersey, North Jersey specifically, um, brewery IPAs. Not yeah. a lot of you know big box IPAs or anything like that. Yeah. And um, and this for being a West Coast, I mean, it does finish dry. You can feel it. it does, on your, you can it feel it on your tongue. It, it finishes dry. It's got um, you know great hop aroma stuff funny we're on the east coast and i got started with ipas with west coast ipas yeah yep not necessarily this one but just west coast but you did live in texas for a little while so did that influence any no, of that or i no? don't think i was drinking it there no no nah, he was a, he was a probably a bud light or coors light i've never drank bud light or coors light <laughs> <laughs> maybe in high school <laughs> don't drink so you're in high school kids so what's the difference between west coast ipas and east coast ipas West Coast IPAs are more bitter by nature. Mm -hmm. They're also clear, right? East Coast IPAs are um, more hoppy aroma and flavor by nature, mm -hmm. less bitter by nature. So when you talk about the brewing process, West Coast IPAs, you're getting more hops in earlier in the boil or when, when, you're, okay. when you're boiling your beer. And that's when you're extracting a lot of the IBUs out of um, out of that type of beer. This has, um, you know, it, it does, it's like warming up. I am getting some of the, the caramel that, that Bert was talking about. Hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's- Money. <laughs> it's a, and, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna get that type of, of caramel, you know, or malt. I mean, and that's really a characteristic from the malt mm -hmm. that you're getting. Um, you're, you're not gonna get that with an East Coast IPA. I, okay. I, I don't, I don't see. Um, the the real question is when we talk about IPAs and this, you know, they the, this West Coast IPA, which is really an American beer because we really don't know what the Burton IPAs, you know, hundreds of years ago in England, what they really were because mm -hmm. there's no recipes from those beers and there's no, you know, they they, te they kept very poor records. So I mean, they were throwing hops in barrels to preserve beers to get beers to be able to ship and 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 not sour and. I gotta believe this is probably something close to that. These West Coast IPAs more so than the East Coast, you know, because this is a okay. cleaner ale yeast, yep. something that they would have had. See, I've watched you a know. lot of beer reviews, and you don't get a lot of history lessons on everybody else's beer reviews. Because <laughs> we got George, and they don't. Yep. So, but I, a, an East Coast is not going to finish as dry. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that dryness on, yeah. on your tongue. Um, definitely not as bitter. Mm -hmm. The double dry hopped, you get a little bit of dryness to them, but not as much as you do on a West Coast. See, but the dryness of, of a beer isn't necessarily coming from the the hops. The dryness from a beer is coming from how far down did it ferment? Like how many residual okay. sugars? Okay. How many residual sugars? And, and not to get like you know crazy nerdy. Crazy We're about nerdy. to get crazy nerdy. Crazy guys. nerdy time. Crazy nerdy about I'm brewery. A little closer, George but, has something to tell you. You know when yeast ferments. The, the lower the yeast ferments, 
the alcohol, you know, the more alcohol mm -hmm. creates and the less sugar it leaves. That's they call it, the term for that is attenuation. And this has much less sugar left in it, I think, than you know, an East Coast to me. And not that you probably mm -hmm. can't make an East Coast dry, but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the hops. It's basically the yeast and the sugar. And that's why that's why something like champagne can be so dry. You know, because that, that champagne yeast is so powerful that it is just eating through every little bit of sugar that's that's left in that wine and making it, you know, there's not, no sugar left. Okay, so that's today's right, segment well, of... Uh, we're not doing about, wine reviews, so uh, you're going to... Brewing, brewing, <laughs> brewing with Jorge. And, and similar to McGee, uh, my, my second... <laughs> my, <laughs> next... <laughs> uh, similar to Biggie, my, my, my second uh, batch of homebrew, my wife threw me out of the kitchen. Yeah? Because I, I was brewing a, um, and then this would also probably surprise you, I was brewing an oatmeal stout that uh, overflowed the pot and permanently stained the stove. Mm. And so, that's actually very close to the story that Tony uh -huh. McGee has because that's, it literally boiled over and went behind the stove and cut the yeah. turkey on fire. Yep, and, and that's, you know, boil overs yeah. happen. They happen quick and they happen when you add, um, you know, if you're homebrewing that, you're using extract and when you add the extract, the boil over can happen. Mm -hmm. and when you add the hops, the boil over can happen. Um, so yeah, I got thrown out of the kitchen real quick. That's how Tony McGee started. And every home brewer. <laughs> you gotta stop saying his name. You know? <laughs> every time you say his name, I think of Fatty McGee from the Adam's <laughs> yeah, Game. <laughs> yeah, that's the dude's name. I'm sorry. That, that's what it says. I don't know, but I mean, everybody knows who it is. You've said it. So overall. Overall, I like it. Overall, I like this it. This is like too. an everyday drinker for me. Everyday drinker. It yeah. could be an everyday drinker IPA. I mean, it's not. At 6.2%, I mean, not for, crazy strong. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, although it doesn't taste. Like it, to know, me, it like drinks like four percent. To me, it drinks more than it, it really does. Drink like more right. than six point two. It right? actually, yeah. it actually feels like you're getting more bang for your buck. Yep. yep. Right. But all about the, the percentage of alcohol to dollars for Bert. That, yes. That's that's, that's, that's that a ratio that we were going to break down in future episodes. <laughs> right. There you have it. That Dollar. Is very, that is very important. To ABV ratio. The ratio. Yeah, man. So all obviously right. a favorite of your guys and my first Lagunitas. Yeah, well, that's favorite, that, but, not a favorite, but definitely a go-to if there's nothing else available. All right. Well, I will yeah. say, since we're talking about like nationwide beers that yes. you can get all yes, then I would call it a, you know, one of my one, one of, of the favorites. favorites. This has got to be your favorite big box, what I would call big yeah. box IPA. Yep. Yeah, you're probably, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, this is, I mean, in theory, not a craft beer by definition because it's owned by Heineken. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's... Um, it's owned by Heineken. Yes, yeah, owned by Heineken. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so know. another one you would like, which maybe we'll do in further review, is Lagunitas a Little Some Some. It's a little better than this, in my opinion. But Yo, this what is? How do you say that? Where this is from? Petaluma. Petaluma. Petaluma, Pet California. Well, there's two locations: Petaluma, Chicago. California, Chicago, and but I, Chicago. But I can pronounce Chicago. Chick Petaluma. <laughs> if you want to say it correctly, Petaluma. Yeah. Well. Yeah, they're not. Okay, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is a great beer. Definitely something to go try out if you haven't. Uh, it's one of my go-to beers when there's nothing else uh, available. West Coast style. Uh, it's a very good East Coast uh, style IPA. It's West Coast style. Yeah. The West Coast style. Yeah. It's West Coast style. And yeah. I, mean, I even like East. It's great for a big box. Yeah. Great yeah. for a big box yeah. company. I yep. dig it. Yeah, good quality. Cheers, so. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, ring that bell, and uh, we hope you're enjoying Thirsty Thursday as much as we're enjoying filming Thirsty Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for you. All for you. Cheers. Peace. Chicken grease.